Terry Bussey signing with Texas A&M holds a lot more significance than just landing a five-star recruit. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked on Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefani. Thanks for making Locked on Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen. It's a good day. It is a good day. Um, I woke up in a great mood today, and I have a feeling that all of you Texas a fans tuned in here every day as Locked on Aggies feel the same way because five-star athlete Terry Bussey signs with the Aggies. So, you know, this signing to me holds a lot more significance than just landing a five-star. And listen. Landing a five-star recruit is is no joke, is no easy task. We know that. I mean, Texas A&M has landed a ton of five-star recruits over um, these, last few, these last few seasons. But this one's special. You know, listen. And LSU fans, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to be honest with you here. Um, I know LSU fans are upset about this one, and, and, it, and it makes sense as Texas A&M fans would have been had it gone the other way. Um, But why are LSU fans upset? Because this kid is an elite, special talent who I have said time and time again to folks who ask, Terry Bussey is going to be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. I stand by that. I have never watched a player play the game of football in my entire life and been more impressed. You know, I, I, I'm more excited about Terry Bussey than I have been a, a recruit at Texas A&M in a very, very long time. And that list of names includes some incredible football players. So, you know, but once again, the reason this has so much significance is LSU wanted this kid. LSU has taken your lunch for, you know, a ton of guys they've taken from you that were committed to you. You know, they um and they take McKinley. They take a handful of other, other of your recruits and they add them to their class. You know, and that that kills you because not only, not only are you losing a recruit of your own, but it's going to someone in your conference. That is the last thing in the world you want. So LSU wanted this kid bad. I mean, bad. And Coach Elko, you know, windmill dunks and he signs with the Aggies. And listen, LSU was confident, and LSU fans that are here, and I know y'all are going to be here, I'm not trying to dunk on y'all. I'm really not. But it's just, you know, I, I kind of have to because this is so significant for Coach Elko and for Texas A&M right now. You know, Coach Elko, I talk about how all the time, y'all know that listen every day, I talk about how building relationships when it comes to the recruiting trail is so crucial it's everything building relationships is everything and you know what what happened he coach Joker doesn't have a ton of time to build a relationship with these kids i mean he just he just gets here but he finds a way to hold on to terry bussey i mean this is just so significant folks and like i said it's a lot bigger than than landing a five star which and as as y'all know sitting here listening to me talk about how good terry bussey can be you know, y- y'all know. I'm saying it, it's it's more important than, than the significance of landing Terry Bussey and his services as a player. It proves that why it's so important. Like I said, the point I'm trying to get to here is it proves that Coach Elko can win big recruiting battles. One that you know, I mean, LSU has been after Bussey for a while, and and Coach Elko gets here. He's been here a couple months. He's able to hold on. 
Um, now I get it. You know, Terry Bussey was already committed. It's not like he was committed to LSU and then in two months, Coach Elko flipped him over to AM. I mean, you know, it, it, he was committed to Texas AM. It seems like he wanted to go to Texas AM. He wanted to stay um, in Texas. But I um I'm just telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is a significant this is one of those gets, and we always tell you, um, and the other thing I've seen is I've seen LSU fans. I feel bad at LSU fans. I'm not trying, I'm really not trying to dunk on y'all. Because they have taken a lot from Texas AM. So they're welcome to, to you know dunk a little bit. But you know, what I've seen is a lot of Texas AM fans saying, I mean, uh, there's a lot of LSU fans saying, you know, well, we got all these guys. And that's true. But they're upset because how how bad they wanted this guy, you know, and that's fair. I mean, they, they, and that's what should excite, that's what should excite. Texas State fans, you know, all these other fans, Texas fans, LSU fans, you're going to tell you a million reasons why you shouldn't be excited about this. Well, it doesn't matter. You're going to waste your talent. Whatever their reasons are, they're going to give you a million reasons why you shouldn't be excited. This is the type of recruiting win that you should be really, really excited about. I mean, I can't wait to see Terry Bussey play football for Texas a and Now, so those are kind of my thoughts on this. Huge win, huge for Mike Elko to get not only a football player that is going to be an absolute star in college and in the SEC, but also winning a recruiting battle against a team you're going to be competing with time and time and time again. This is so significant, ladies and gentlemen, and this is something you should be excited about. It's a Thursday, waking up early for work, whatever it is, you're welcome to be excited about this. I am. I'm, I woke up giddy as can be. I've, I've never been this excited about anything ever, not one time ever. Christmas is pretty exciting, but you get what I'm saying here. Okay. So that's why it's so significant. Now I want to read through a couple things. One of the huge question marks is, Hey, where's he going to play? What's he going to do? Well, we have a player that can play every sport in the world, every position in every sport. What's he going to do for Texas A&M's football team when it comes to playing a position? I think coach Elko cleared that up a little bit, but we're going to read, um, you know, coach Elko took the, um, Podium yesterday, spoke to the media. We're going to talk a little bit about some things he had to say. So um, some quotes. So not all of them about Terry Bossy. I think two of them are, but I wanted to read through a lot of these because they're really, really interesting. So the first one I got here is Coach Huckle talking about the Notre Dame game. He says, I know this place will be rocking when Notre Dame comes here. I don't think I need to dare our fan base to show up. I know they'll be here when we need them. I appreciate our fans. Um you know, that just gets me excited for football. It's like we're so far away from football, but, man, it doesn't feel like it when when we're talking about Notre Dame coming to town. He then goes on to say, um, we weren't looking to just bring in bodies when it comes to the portal in high school. We identified guys that we thought could add a lot of value for us, and we were able to land a lot of that, a lot of that group from the transfers to Terry Bussey. He then goes on to say, now, this is a great – Great point. I need to listen to this. I'm pretty sure everybody here tuning in needs to listen to this. And, and it's and it is a very great, you know, just listen to this quote. Um, Mike Elko on Terry Bussey. Let's be careful a little bit. He's a really talented player. He's a really great athlete. Let's not put too much on one young man. We're excited about him. He's going to eventually play a big role at Texas a m but let's not put too much pressure on him too early. Great point. So what Coach Elko is saying here is, hey, if you don't see him a ton his freshman season, don't freak out. Um, now, I'll be honest with you. I, st I, I still – I mean, we've all seen this kid play. I think you're going to see him on the football field as a true freshman. I think Coach Elko thinks that too, but he's trying to manage expectations. You know, this is, once again, one thing we have to remember about college athletics, and it can be hard at times, but these are, you know, 18-, 19-year-old kids. Um doing this you know they're young they're st they're still growing they're still becoming people and you know and, and learning life skills and all that so you know that's i think that's kind of the point that coach elko is trying to make here um it is you know and i'm not no one would bash this kid but just you know he's he's got to settle into his role and settle in who he is as a player and all that um he then goes on to say on terry bussy and how where he's going to play um, both ways all of the time is hard, but when you have a kid that's as dynamic as he is, you have to find ways for him to impact the football game. Some of that will be in the return game, in spot ways on offense, and we anticipate a lot of that being on defense. So it sounds like 
He's going to be a defensive kind of specialist, but they'll use him in their turn game. They'll maybe have some gadgets for him in the offense. He's just going to be one of those players. That you never know what he's going to do. This will be a ton of fun to watch. Um, and then Coach Elko on the transfer portals, our transfer players. Uh, we wanted to go out and find value across the board. I think we did that. We expect those guys to play a large role moving forward in the fall. So those are some quotes quote from Coach Elko. Um, but to recap that, Terry Bussey signs. Ladies and gentlemen, we should all be excited about this. You get a, a recruiting win over LSU, a team that really wanted them. And so you, you pull in a five-star that is going to be an absolutely dominant football player. It is a great, great day to be a Texas A&M football fan. Want to know why else it's a great day to be a Texas A&M football fan? Well, Terry Bussey, you can, you know, he'd been committed and signed, but you got another commit. Four-star receiver, Ashton Bethel-Roman. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, if you want another reason to be excited, go watch the tape on this kid. We'll talk about him coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. If you are like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snack, and placing some super bets. Super Bowl. You know, I've got to start pulling up props. I'll have to pull up props for the FanDuel um, discussion on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Aggies. But, I mean, what, what are we feeling, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, let's get surgical. I mean, who's going to – Kelsey yards? Are we going to think McCaffrey's going to go off on the ground? Is this going to be a shootout? Is this going to be a low-scoring game? What is this Super Bowl going to look like? And how are we going to make some money off of that? Um, let me know in the comments, ladies and gentlemen, favorite bet you got for the Super Bowl. I'd love to hear it. I would love to hear it. FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a dub or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players are going to score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and a ton more. New customers, Join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So, Ashton Bethel Roman commits and signs Two with Texas A&M. He is the son of Mark Roman, who was a 10-year NFL vet. He was a uh, the 34th, 34th overall pick, I believe. Um, so Ashton Bethel Roman, receiver, six foot and a half, which once again, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who listen to my show every day, just say six one. There's no reason for the half. Just say six one. We're all gonna believe you. Um, six foot and a, six foot and a half, 170 pounds. He so. As y'all know, once again, another thing, if y'all listen to Locked on Aggies, you're every day or two at the show. I, I love 24-7 sports. It's kind of my go-to spot. And um, he's ranked on 24-7 sports as the 131st player in the class. In the um, composite rankings, which, you know, puts together, combines all the different services, rivals, on three, ESPN, you know, combines all those. He's ranked at the 228th spot. So this is a top 300 recruit wherever you look. But on the one that I like to use the most myself, he's a top 150 recruit. Watching the tape on this kid, the first thing you notice, all, all, I, all I heard about before I watched tape or before any of that was speed, shifty, or I was speed. Speed, 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 speed. Quick guy. Watching the tape, I, I think what stood out, is he's not just fast. I talk about this a lot too, as y'all know. I, I I don't like one dimensional football players. I like football players who maybe have have their number one skill, but they're good at other things. So like a receiver that's just fast. I talk about. I mean, like how? I mean, how how often do we watch the receiver that lights up the um, forty yard dash at the NFL Combine, um, but doesn't then goes you know in the early in the second round of the draft and, and ha doesn't have a good career. How often do we see that play out? Happens a ton. So you want a player who can run fast, but also is shifty and can catch the football. That's what stood out to me. 
about Ashton Bethel Roman is he was he's, he's quick as can be, but he can also make you miss, and he has incredible hands. I mean, the hand, truly, like he made some catches where I was like, that is not just a speedster catching the football. That, that's a really great catch. And it wasn't just like go routes. It was, I mean, he's running routes. And that's the other thing. It's kind of like, you know, when you're, you're, uh, you grow up and you're the tallest kid. Um, so you play center, you know, and, and you, you can um, play in basketball and you can never dribble. And then you get, uh, you know, middle school and high school and you're six foot two and you're like, well, now I can't play center. What do I do? I don't have a handle because I played center my whole life. That's kind of like what it's like if, if you're a, a, a speedy receiver who just runs go routes. You're one dimensional. And that's not what Ashton Bethel Roman is. He is not one dimensional. He can do it all. He can, has, he can run crisp routes. He's shifty. He'll make you miss with the speed. He's just flat out fast. And he has incredible hands. So he was committed to Arkansas. He decommitted a few days ago. Coach Elko actually said in that same press conference, he kind of went on to say, like, this was a kid we wanted for a while. Um, we They wanted to get him back in December, but wouldn't, wouldn't able to make it happen. But, hey, I don't care when you do it. I care that you do it. And they got the job done um, with him. So I want to read this quote from 24-7 Sports. Uh, it's Gabe Brooks, who was their scouting analyst, and he had this to say via the written word about uh, Bethel Roman. He says, high-level receiver prospect, who's shown productivity to all levels with big play athleticism and underneath know-how, lean, sent away athlete with good length and broader shoulders for listed size. Easy long strider who generates sneaky top-end speed that reflects track prowess, exceptionally smooth in movement patterns with an ease of motion that uh, believes quick twitch, redirecting ability and acceleration, Dangerous in space thanks to combination of close quarters agility and sudden linear explosion. Elite combine tester in agility categories. Short um, sh short shuttle three cone, those kind of drills. So um, they also compare him to Jalen Hyatt, former Tennessee receiver, who now is with the New York Giants. That's a pretty good comparison. As you know, that's, that's a good comparison. Um, so, you know, I won't read that whole thing because uh, it'll get long and but you know the point here and that's the other thing too and that's kind of what Gabe Brooks was saying here um talking about um Bethel Roman but is I mean what I've never and I've never seen this this is interesting but when you just watch him run like watching him run it just looks so smooth and fluid like you watch you know what Isaiah you know talking about the Super Bowl Isaiah Pacheco while Isaiah Pacheco is an elite athlete with a ton of speed, of course, when he runs, it like it looks like he's fighting the ground. You know what I mean? Um, that's what they always joke and say, but it does. When you watch Ashton Bethel Roman run, it's just so fluid and quick and uh, perfect strides. It just looks really, really good watching him run the football. Um, you know, once it's in his hands. And that's the other thing you saw in the high school tape is they would get it to him in many ways. They would do end around, screen plays, but it wasn't just like that. That's your generic fast guy stuff. Okay. End around, we'll throw a bubble screen to you and, and make some magic happen with your, with your legs. But that's not just what, you know, Roman, uh, Bethel Roman does. He can run routes and catch the football. That's why the tape to me, I always just, when I see, you know, people, highlighting speed about a player that's my when my my knee-jerk reaction is always to go okay well can he do anything else is he just fast not to say i wouldn't be excited about him if he if he was just fast but seeing that he's shifty and you they can use him in a ton of different ways and he runs great routes and he can has great hands to catch the football whether it's a contested catch whether it's a sideline catch i mean this is this is just really good tape for a highly ranked player who comes in and is just a massive, massive addition to this 2024 recruiting class. I think the perfect way to close things out. Um, you also sign the offensive lineman, Robert Bourdon, who Coach Elko is excited about. He talked a lot about that, um, excited about him coming in. And he was committed to Coach Elko at Duke and then comes to Texas A&M. So, uh, hey, listen, he's one of his guys. He trusts in him. But – I think we learned something, ladies and gentlemen. We learned that Mike Elko can, in fact, 
recruit. I'm bought in to Coach Elko in this 10-year relationship, and I think he's going to be extremely successful at Texas A&M. The basketball team, they did it, ladies and gentlemen. They go on the road to Missouri, a very, very bad Missouri basketball team, but they go on the road in the SEC, which is never easy, and find the way to get the win. Huge win. We will break it down coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time is the best place to go get your tickets, whether they're last minute. I love the Game Time app. I can't sit here and talk enough about the Game Time app. What I love about it, ladies and gentlemen, is they're in the business of saving folks money. We talk about how nice it is to go to these events, to go to a basketball game, a football game, baseball, a uh, comedy, go to a country music concert, whatever whatever you want to go do, whatever you enjoy going to do. Some of these competitors, Game Time's competitors, are in the business of, you know, charging you money and, and take, you know what I mean? And, and that's not it's not right. It's not right to, to see these companies, you know, all, all they care about is making a buck. You know, these events are what bring people joy, hardworking people joy. And Game Time understands that, so they are in the business of saving everybody money and i just respect that so much it's why i always use game time what no matter what i'm getting a ticket for i'm getting it on game time take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time right now all game time users get a hundred dollars off a big game ticket with code vegas 100 terms apply just download the game time app and use code v-e-g-a-s-1-0-0 for a hundred dollars off a big game ticket or if you're not going to the game use code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase, download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So we are going to talk a little bit about the basketball win over Missouri, and we are going to preview their matchup with Tennessee coming up on Saturday, and what will be a massive basketball game. So when it comes to the win over Missouri, Texas and wins this one. 79-60, they were up 38-25 at the half. And let's be honest, Missouri got this a little interesting early in the second half. Um, I mean, it did. It got it got interesting quick. But then Texas A&M does end up – this is what I like to see too. You extended. You extended your lead. So, like I said, for a while you went, oh, man, this, is, this has gotten interesting. This has gotten close after having a huge halftime lead. Um, and huge, I mean, you know, 13 points, not like it was 25, but still, um, you know, they, they were able to cut that lead pretty quick, but you were still able to extend your lead in the second half so that you won the first half 38, 25, win the second half 41, 35 to win the game by 19 points. I love it when you extend the lead that to me is a big deal. It's knowing, you know, Hey, we played a good first half to create this 13 point lead. And then we took their best shot in the second half and still were able to create six more points in the second half. I love that. So Boots was incredible in this game. He has been playing really good basketball. Boots, of course, 8 for 15 from the field, 1 of 2 from deep, 4 rebounds in a uh, team high, game high, 22 points. Wade Taylor, 7 of 16 from the field, 1 of 5 from 3. Five rebounds, three assists, 18 points. And then Anderson Garcia, you know, is one of the most, I think, you know, just, I mean, what he brings to the table is is incredible. Look, listen to this stat line. Listen to this stat line from Anderson Garcia. Seven points, okay. 16 rebounds, eight offensive, eight defensive. Five assists, one steal, Two blocks. I mean, that is an incredible stat line. Incredible stat line. What he brings to this team is just so, of course, playing 33 minutes. Um, what he brings to this team is just really, really good to see. I mean, I mean, he's that type of player. He is the glue guy, the guy uh, that just finds a way every game to help the team. And maybe it's not always, it might not always be, um, it might not always be with points. 
Maybe it's rebounds, offensive rebounds, creating second chance opportunities, assists, you know, playing great defense. It's everything. That's what he brings. There's so much value. Um, so Henry Coleman, I uh, left the game last night. Um, I'm trying to find an update on him. Um, he said, it's not the same hit as Kentucky, so I think we'll be okay with that. Texas A&M head coach Buzz Williams said on the a and Post Game Radio Show, Henry Coleman's apparent injury that kept him out the last seven minutes of play. So um, sounds like nothing too concerned about there for Henry Coleman. But just big win for the Aggies, ladies and gentlemen. Going on the road, getting a win, it's always important. You never know what's going to happen. Getting a win, you are back over 500 in SEC play. Great to hear. And now you've got a monumental game coming up with the Tennessee Volunteers coming to town. Um, it's going to be rowdy. That game's coming up on Saturday. Tennessee's really good. I mean, really, really, really good. But Texas A&M can win this basketball game if they play well. They can. Is it likely? No. But the ESPN FPI numbers give them a 41% chance to win this game. I think that these are two pretty good, uh, solid defensive teams. You know, Texas A&M can rebound the basketball, get some offensive boards. Ugly this game up, and the Aggies can win. I mean, is, is it likely? No. Are people going to pick Texas A&M in this game? No. But, you know, you, you have the home court advantage. You have an opportunity here to get a huge win and really turn things around. So there's going to be a lot of excitement and anticipation surrounding this basketball game. Um, and can you stop Dalton Connect? That's going to be everything. He's a really good basketball player, potential, you know, likely SEC player of the year. Can Texas A&M stop him? If they can, they can win this basketball game. But it's going to be an absolute dog fight, rock fight, ugly game. And I think Texas A&M can win this one ugly, but it's going to be a lot of fun. That is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here, tuning in every single day. I really do appreciate it. Everybody enjoy it. This day will forever be known as Terry Bussey Day, forever until the end of time. Enjoy it. I know I will. Everybody have a great rest of your day today, and we will see you tomorrow.